What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna find out when you should use a switch statement versus when you should use a conditional statement in Apex. We'll figure out what the benefits of each one of those are, and we'll take a look at some examples together in Apex. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. In this episode, we are gonna take a closer look at when you should use a switch statement versus when you should use a conditional statement. And we'll take a look at some of the uh, differences between them and uh, just go more in depth than we have with either of the other two episodes. But before we get into the differences between switch statements and conditional statements, make sure if you actually enjoy this video to like it because when you do, it helps this video get out to more people just like you that wanna learn about this stuff for free. So you enjoy it, like it, now let's get back to the video. So if you've been following along, the last two episodes have been about conditional statements and about switch statements, what they are, how to use them, all that kind of stuff. But now the question is, since we have switch statements and conditional statements and they're kind of similar, when would you use a switch statement uh, as opposed to a conditional statement and vice versa, right? So um, let's check that out. So let's take a look first at, uh, actually, let's take a, for, uh, a look first at the switch statement. So the switch statement, as you can see, is taking a look at a single variable, right? It's evaluating a single variable and the value that that single variable might hold, right? Um, in this case, we're taking a look at an integer and uh, we're seeing whether or not its value is two or three, four or five or something else entirely. But um, we could also take a look at uh, other data types, the other data types that a switch statement can evaluate are longs, uh, S objects, strings, and enums. Uh, and enums, uh, don't worry if you don't know what those are. Uh, those are something that we'll go over way later in this series. Um, but it's important to note that that's pretty much all that a switch statement can evaluate. And additionally, a switch statement can only evaluate one variable at a time, right? So if you wanted to say do an evaluation on two integers, say you passed an integer, you know, i2, right? You couldn't say switch on i1 and i2, right? There's no i1, i2 or something like that. And there's no i1 and and i2 or, or, or whatever else, right? There's no way to switch on both of them. Um, and the reason for that is well, <laughs> number one, it operates different than uh, a conditional statements, but also it has to do with operational speed. Switch statements are much, much, much faster, typically, than conditional statements. Um, we're not gonna go over this in this tutorial series, I don't think. Uh, maybe I'll get to it way at the end. But there's this concept called big O notation, and um, it determines the run speed of your code, uh, of code that you've written, right? And switch statements operate in what's called uh, O of one, uh, <laughs> which I'm not gonna go over, but essentially it's faster than a conditional statement. Um, so if you're really only evaluating one variable in some cases for different you know, values of that variable, then switch statements are gonna be faster and much more performant. Um, so you might want to consider them uh, as opposed to a conditional statement. If all your conditional statement is doing is just checking to see if the first name is equal equal to Matt, right? Or it's equal, if a first name is equal to Bob or whatever, and you're just evaluating the first name in all of your conditional statements to see whether they're true or false, well, you could instead do it in a switch statement and it would actually operate much quicker than in a conditional statement. So that's important to know. Another important thing to know about switch statements is, unlike conditionals, which I'll show you here in just a minute, switch statements cannot use uh, variables to evaluate a value. So say for instance, I up here made a variable uh, and we'll call it public 
static integer um, value two or something. Yeah, value two is equal to two. And I wanted to evaluate that here. It won't let me do that. And you can see that by the red value. And if you tried to save it, it wouldn't work. And the reason for this, again, is all about how the compiler interprets this to make sure that it's super performant. Um, so you cannot use variables to evaluate your, um, you know, to evaluate the, the variable that you're switching on, right? You can't compare it to value two or whatever. It actually has to be the value two. Or if you're evaluating a string, it would have to be a literal string right here, right? Which is super important to know. Now, when we go over enums, again, you can use enums here to evaluate your variable. And, and the reason for that is because enums are quite a bit different than, than variables. Um, but you cannot use a regular variable to evaluate stuff here, which is super important because uh, you know sometimes <laughs> it's, it's kind of uh, desired to use a variable as opposed to you know writing something in line or just um, literally uh, as you can see here. So important to know, you cannot use variables in a switch statement. You cannot evaluate more than one variable at a time in a switch statement. And uh, switch statements, if they work for you, are actually much faster, typically, than a conditional statement or an if-else statement. So important to know. Again, if we come back over here to our conditional statement, we have a lot more um, flexibility, right? If I wanted to, in my conditional statement, have a public static final string called Harry and set that equal to Harry, then I could do that. And I could check this out here. And you can see that um, it's fine, right? It's going to actually do that comparison. Is the first name equal to my string Harry up here? And that's okay to do. Uh, there's no problem with that. Doesn't matter what the object type is, you can do it. No big deal. Uh, the other thing that's important that we kind of went over before is say I was also evaluating a case for some reason. And I wanted to say, you know, if the first name and last name is Jambalaya <laughs> uh, and the case dot subject, I don't know, equals equals tacos, tacos, then I could, right? I can evaluate multiple variables at the same time in a conditional statement. Again, I cannot do that in a switch statement. So if you're needing to evaluate multiple variables uh, at the same time, then, you know, you'll need to do that. And this, this goes for um, multiple values on a, an S object as well, right? So a contact or a case are referred to as an S object. I couldn't just say, for instance, drop my contact, like switch on my contact uh, on here and try to only match on first name. Instead, I'd have to evaluate my first name like so. So if I came in here and I passed in a contact I would have to switch on contact dot first name only, right? And then I'd have to say Harry, et cetera, et cetera. So as you can see, I'm evaluating multiple variables here, the first name, the last name, a completely different um, you know, object, the case object that I pass in, and its subject variable. And you can do this for as much as you want. Um, really, and um, it'll allow you to do that. But it is important to note that uh, these do operate a little bit slower, and it's because you can essentially evaluate whatever conditions that you want. Um, and that can get unruly, right, <laughs> sometimes. So um, all right, so to break this down a little bit, if you're gonna use a conditional uh, you're gonna use um, conditionals 
you're, you're going to want to use them when you're evaluating more than one variable, when you're doing a comparison that's more than a Boolean. Uh, I guess I didn't go over that. But if you're doing a comparison that's more than uh, a Boolean, say maybe you wanted to say uh, dot contains the value Harry. Well, there's no way to say dot contains or, you know, is something greater than or equal to or whatever else. You can't say that um, in a switch statement. Uh, you can't do contains. You can't do essentially any comparison other than is it equal to three or four or five, essentially just booleans. Is it a three or four or five? Yes. OK, then let's get in here. You can't say, is my integer <clears throat> is my integer less than two? Is my integer greater than three? That's not possible with the switch, uh, at least in Apex <laughs> and other languages. Uh, there's uh, that's, that's not always true. But in Apex, you can't. So you would need to do that over here in a conditional. So conditional statements, when you have more than a Boolean comparison to a value, right? More than an equals equals to a single value, then you're going to need to use conditionals. Um, if you're evaluating more than one variable uh, for a condition, then you need to use conditional statements, not switch statements. If you would prefer to use a string comparison or a variable comparison to your uh, value here, then you should use uh, a conditional statement. Essentially, the only time that you should use a switch statement is when you're evaluating a single variable and you are evaluating only whether it's, it has a specific value on that variable. And the reason that you would use a switch statement as opposed to conditional is because it will operate much faster um, if you have, you know, a good case to use it. So, um, all right. I think, I hope, I've gone over all of the things that are super important here to know about both switch statements and conditional statements. And hopefully this makes it easier, a little bit easier for you to figure out when you should use one over the other. Um, all right. I think that'll do it for this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, Please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I'm happy to answer them. And uh, I hope that I will see you in the next episode.